Like I hope you have some kind of comfort food in front of you right now because you're probably going to need it. Hello, beautiful best friends. It's so lovely to have you back in our safe, cozy, itty bitty space of the big wide internet out there. I hope you are safe and that you are well and that you're having a wonderful week so far. If you are new here, then hi, my name is Liz and I am so glad that you randomly stumbled across this video. Just so you know, we are not alone here today. We are joined by our amazing superstar Lily because she doesn't like being locked out while I record and she loves to emotionally support us as we hang out because because she's a queen and it's probably something that we're actually going to need today because heads up, today is a heavy one. So I actually came across today's case when I was researching for a different case entirely, but taking into account all of the things that are happening in some places of the world recently, it kind of stopped me in my tracks and I knew I had to drop what I was doing and cover it immediately. This technically is a true crime case, but it's a very different type of case than what we would usually talk about. And it's a case that's going to make you feel <laughs> all of the emotions, especially if you're an individual in possession of a uterus and hopefully Lily comes through with the emotional support today because I can all but guarantee you are going to feel anger, you're going to feel gobsmacked, heartbroken and maybe even a little bit terrified. So today we're headed to El Salvador in Central America and we're going to meet a young woman named Evelyn Hernandez. In April 2016 when this case took place Evelyn was just 18 years old living with her family in quite a rural and impoverished area of El Salvador near her hometown, El Carmen, and she was a domestic worker as well as studying to become a nurse. Very early on the 6th of April 2016, Evelyn woke up feeling not great. She felt pretty terrible, actually. She told her mum that she had a really bad stomach ache and she didn't want to go to college that day. So Evelyn stayed home and took it easy, but things only got worse. She was in pain that was gradually getting more intense and she had a very upset stomach and awful cramps. So she went to the bathroom, which was an outhouse separate to their home, described more so as like a makeshift toilet. A little bit of time later, Evelyn's mum realised that Evelyn had been gone a while and so she went to check on her daughter and her mum was just met with a terrifying scene. Evelyn was unconscious, collapsed on the floor of the outhouse, just lying in a pool of her own blood. Like I cannot even imagine her poor mum and how scared she must have been, having no idea what was going on or what had happened. But thankfully her mum thought quickly, she acted quickly and managed to get Evelyn, who was just drenched in blood, out of there. And she flagged down a pickup truck and drove Evelyn the roughly 40k or 25 mile journey to the hospital in El Carmen, a journey that would have taken approximately 30 minutes. Once admitted to the emergency room there, Evelyn was treated for significant blood and fluid loss and her condition was that severe that she remained in hospital for six days. But what had happened, right? Had Evelyn been attacked? Had she suffered some kind of medical emergency? What was going on? Well, as Evelyn's mum was anxiously waiting in the waiting room for news about her daughter, it didn't take long long for members of the medical staff to approach her and tell her the shocking news that Evelyn had given birth. The doctors who had examined her had seen all of the signs of Evelyn very recently delivering a baby. And I would imagine that this news would have been very shocking to her mum because no one knew that Evelyn had been pregnant in the first place, including Evelyn herself. And now, of course, the doctors were asking both Evelyn and her mum, where is the baby? But tragically, just five short hours later, the body of Evelyn's baby boy would be found in the septic tank of the toilet in the outhouse where she had been found unconscious. So just to try and sum up everything that she's been through, the 18-year-old Evelyn is there in hospital being treated for both severe anemia from all of the blood that she's lost and a urinary tract infection. And she's just found out that she had given birth without even realizing that she was pregnant in the first place. This pregnancy had occurred the previous year when Evelyn was just 
17 years old and had been repeatedly raped by the member of a criminal gang, but she had never suspected that she could have been pregnant because in the time since, she had experienced intermittent bleeding, which she had assumed to be her menstrual period. And then on top of all of this, Evelyn has just found out that her baby has died just moments after finding out that he had ever existed in the first place. This whole scenario is just so tragic and heartbreaking for her to even begin to try and process and heal from. But as it would turn out, Evelyn wouldn't get that chance to heal. In fact, this was all just the beginning of a waking nightmare that would go on for years to come. Because when Evelyn and her mum hadn't been able to tell the medical staff at the hospital where her baby was, the staff had called the police and notified the authorities that they suspected that Evelyn had had an abortion, which is illegal in El Salvador. So the police arrived at the hospital and right there in the emergency room, Evelyn was handcuffed to her bed, while police escorted her mother back to their home and searched the property. So it was the police themselves that found the baby boy in the septic tank. And one week later, once Evelyn was discharged from the hospital, she was taken straight into police custody to await trial, having been charged with aggravated homicide for the death of her baby boy. So to give you guys some background and context, El Salvador is a very religious and conservative country with about 80% of its population identifying as either Catholic or evangelical Christian. And in 1998, it became one of four countries in Central America to put a total ban on abortion. And I mean, total. It doesn't matter if the pregnancy is a result of rape or incest or human trafficking. It doesn't matter if the mother's life is at risk if the pregnancy isn't terminated. There are no exceptions. And any intentional termination of a pregnancy can and usually will be prosecuted as a crime. And the term intentional termination is very broad, including stillbirths due to home births or medical emergencies. And since 1990, it's estimated that over 600 women have been charged and arrested under these laws. And it's not just the women that can be prosecuted either. When Evelyn turned up at the hospital that day, having clearly delivered a baby and not having said baby with her, the medical staff that reported her to authorities did so because in these instances, the instant suspicion is not that this poor woman has had a miscarriage or a stillbirth. Instead, it's assumed that she has had had or attempted to have an abortion, and medical staff are legally required to report these women to police under threat of hefty fines or even more likely lengthy jail sentences for themselves. And so this has led to women being jailed for having miscarriages and stillbirths and other obstetric emergencies, something that very tragically was the case for Evelyn. Evelyn was originally charged with inducing an abortion, which led to her baby's death, a charge that carries a sentence of eight years in prison. However, when the prosecutors and authorities were unable to find any evidence that Evelyn ever made an attempt to procure an abortion, the prosecutors took the route that they quite often do in these cases. And rather than, I, I don't know, dropping the case, they instead upgraded the charges to aggravated homicide, a charge that carries up to 40 years in prison. In the time leading up to her trial and ever since, Evelyn's story has never changed. She said that she had been raped repeatedly by a gang member when she was just 17 years old, but had never reported the assaults because the man that raped her made death threats against her and her family if she ever told anyone. Over the months leading up to the birth, Evelyn said that she did experience stomach issues and discomfort, but because like we said, she was experiencing bleeding that she confused with her period, she had never suspected that she might have been pregnant and had no idea that she had even given birth until she was being hounded at the hospital by the medical staff, asking her where her baby was. And even though Evelyn's baby would be determined to be roughly at 32 weeks gestation, making her about eight months pregnant, Evelyn's mum said that her daughter had never had a baby bump, quite the opposite. She described Evelyn as being thin right up until she had given birth that day in April 2016, when Evelyn said that experiencing those horrific 
horrific stomach pains, she had gone to the outhouse thinking that she just needed to use the toilet. But once there, all alone and in agony, Evelyn had been very quickly overcome and having no idea what was happening, just that she was losing a lot of blood, she collapsed and lost consciousness. And both Evelyn and her mum claimed that while they were rushing to the hospital, they had no idea that back home in the septic tank of the toilet was the body of the baby boy that Evelyn had given birth to. Evelyn told the press outside the court before her trial began in 2017 that this baby, had she known that she was pregnant, she would have awaited his arrival with pride and joy. But at Evelyn's trial, the prosecution said that both Evelyn and her mother were lying, that both women had known that Evelyn was pregnant but had hidden the pregnancy and failed to seek prenatal medical care because the pregnancy was unwanted. And they said that once Evelyn was very nearly full term, she and her mum had induced an abortion and left the baby for dead. And a huge aspect of the prosecution's case against Evelyn should have rested on whether the baby died in the womb or in the moments after the birth. But the prosecution said that the baby's time or cause of death had been unable to be determined during the autopsy or by their own forensic experts. So they couldn't even prove the circumstances under which the baby had died. But apparently at trial, proving how the baby died wasn't a vital factor in proving Evelyn guilty of murder. And in July 2017, the judge found Evelyn guilty of aggravated homicide and sentenced her to 30 years in prison. This conviction was then upheld by an appellate court a few months later in October 2017. It wasn't until February 2019 when Evelyn had already served 33 months in the overcrowded Elopango Women's Prison that the Supreme Court overturned her conviction and ordered that she receive a new trial under a different judge, deciding that the judge at her first trial had made her decision based on prejudice and insufficient evidence. This decision for a retrial was after an appeal presented by Evelyn's team where they showed that forensic tests had proven that the baby had died of meconium aspiration, a potentially fatal obstetric emergency where the baby inhales their own stool, an emergency that can occur while the baby is still in the womb, during delivery, or immediately after birth, and requires immediate medical intervention. And it was alleged that the prosecution had been aware of these findings during Evelyn's first trial, but had chosen to ignore them as it didn't line up with their version of events. And just to add to the injustice, even though part of the Supreme Court's ruling was that Evelyn be released immediately to prepare for her retrial, for some reason, her release was delayed for an additional two months, you know, because apparently she hadn't been through enough. Yeah, apparently they thought she hadn't been through enough, Lil. Right? Ridiculous. Hey, they thought she deserved another two months. Can you believe that? You're just here to share your displeasure? Hey? Me too. The day before her retrial began a few months later, Evelyn told the press outside the court, quote, I am innocent and with the grace of God, everything will be okay, unquote. And this retrial was a huge deal. In fact, it was the first retrial in history in El Salvador of an abortion case. Before this, there had been women who had been found guilty of having abortions that had had their 30-year sentences commuted because they had been considered too harsh. But their verdicts had never been overturned, like in Evelyn's case. And there were protesters and supporters lining the streets outside the courthouse with picket signs and chanting their support of Evelyn. The prosecution changed up their game for this new trial, of course. Firstly, and just steal yourselves, the prosecution were pushing for a harsher sentence of 40 years for Evelyn, yeah, 10 years more than she had originally been sentenced to. But whereas at the first trial, the prosecution had claimed that Evelyn had intentionally killed her child, which would have been a crime of commission, they now argued that Evelyn had known that she was pregnant, but his in her pregnancy and avoided prenatal medical care and failed to provide her child with appropriate care after delivery, which all made this now a crime of omission. They said that Evelyn had killed her baby by failing to act to save the baby's life. And they made these arguments despite the fact that the medical staff that had treated Evelyn at the hospital said that she had lost that much blood and bodily fluid that her blood pressure had suffered a dramatic drop. 
you know, the very reason that she had been found collapsed and unconscious on the floor after giving birth. Actually, to be technical, these staff said that Evelyn had suffered from hypovolemic shock, which is where you've lost that much blood that your body literally goes into shock and your heart isn't able to pump enough blood around your body and your organs can literally shut down. So Evelyn's defense team correctly argued that had Evelyn not been unconscious, bleeding, in shock, then maybe she would have been able to react in a different way after giving birth. But in the condition she was in, even if the baby had been born alive, there was just no way that she would have been capable of trying to get medical assistance for her baby or for herself. And despite the prosecution claiming that Evelyn had known that she was pregnant, none of their multiple witnesses that took the stand were ever able to confirm this while testifying. Evelyn had never spoken about being pregnant to anyone that had known her. And this was in direct conflict with the prosecution's argument of a crime by omission, because if Evelyn hadn't known that she was pregnant, as she'd always claimed, how could she be accused of failing to seek prenatal care for a baby that she didn't know existed? And thankfully, the judge at this trial agreed. After the final verdict was postponed not once but twice, Evelyn Hernandez was finally acquitted. And after serving nearly three years in jail, she was a free woman. There was a huge celebration outside the courtroom once the verdict was announced, which was said to shock Evelyn to the point where at first she didn't know how to respond. Like, I think she wasn't sure if the crowds were there in her support or to protest against her. But once she realized that the celebration was for her, she broke down and told the press that she thanked God that justice had been done and that her future plans were to continue her studies in nursing and work towards her goals. But here's where things go from just plain infuriating to enough to set your blood actually boiling because shortly after Evelyn was found innocent at her second trial, the prosecution announced that they would be appealing for a third trial, wanting another opportunity to put Evelyn behind bars with what they described as overwhelming proof of her criminal responsibility in her baby's death. In their statement to the press, the prosecution said that while they were responsible for the support and accompaniment of female victims in any crime, that in Evelyn's case, there were no elements to consider her a victim at all. Quite the opposite. The only victim was her son. Thankfully, in June 2020, it was announced that the court that heard this appeal for a third trial made the decision to uphold Evelyn's innocence. However, the prosecution can still launch further appeals down the track. So even though Evelyn is technically innocent, from what it sounds like, no matter what she goes on to achieve from this point on in her life, no matter how much she tries to move on and heal from this horrific, traumatic experience, it's always going to be hanging over her head, the chance that at any time she can be dragged back to court, accused of murder, for having a miscarriage. And the worst part of this whole case is that it's not unique and Evelyn is not by any means alone. There have been a reported 146 prosecutions against women in El Salvador under these abortion laws just in the period between 2014 and 2019. That's an average of two to three prosecutions a month. And of those prosecutions, 60 of the women were given jail time, 24 of whom were convicted of aggravated homicide, just like Evelyn. And these convictions usually fall on women who are young and poor and often victims of rape. Many of them have suffered miscarriages and stillbirths and other medical complications and emergencies because depending on where they live, the circumstances of their family and home life, or if they're poverty stricken, they haven't had access to prenatal care or regular checkups. El Salvador's own president, Nayib Bukele, has been quoted acknowledging this, saying, and I quote, if a poor woman has a miscarriage, she's immediately suspected of having had an abortion. Paula Avala Guillen, who is the director of the Latin America Initiatives at the Women's Equality Center in New York, says in El Salvador, all women are considered second-class citizens and poor, vulnerable women like Evelyn 
third-class citizen. So the full weight of the justice system is thrown at them regardless of the evidence. And this is true. The reason prosecutors go after these women so aggressively is because they're easy picking. So basically, you've got all of the elements for an absolute disaster for women's rights here. And I know we've spoken a lot about numbers and statistics, and it might be getting a little bit muddled for you, but just bear with me. According to statistics, 40% of El Salvador's population falls below the poverty line. There is also a very high crime rate to the point where El Salvador was once considered to be the homicide capital of the world and has been declared by Amnesty International as one of the most dangerous countries in the world to be a woman, with one woman killed approximately every 15 hours. And even though, according to recent opinion polls conducted in El Salvador, its residents seem to be leaning towards slightly more lenient abortion laws, like allowing medical interventions where the mother's life is at risk or the pregnancy isn't viable, many Salvadorans believe that rape victims should have to carry out their pregnancies, a terrifying concept in a country where every year an estimated 25,000 women are impregnated as the result of being raped, and where even though the age of consent is 17, in 2018 over half of the reported sexual violence cases involved girls between the ages of 12 and 17. While Evelyn's case ended up catching the interest of the media and it was reported on on a global scale, as I mentioned, her case is by no means unique. Rights organizations in El Salvador estimate that even after campaigners have successfully aided in the release of around 30 women who were jailed under the country's abortion laws, there are still at least 20 more of these women still in jail. One of these women was Teodora Vasquez, who was released in February 2018, having served 10 years in prison after late in her pregnancy. She experienced terrible abdominal pains and called for an ambulance and then passed out. And when she came to, she was in the hospital, her baby had died, and the police were there, ready to arrest her. In April 2017, 19-year-old Imelda Cortez was rushed to hospital after giving birth to a baby girl in her outhouse. Imelda had been sexually abused by her elderly stepfather for years, but she had no idea that she was pregnant until the baby girl was found in the septic tank and brought to the hospital. And the baby fortunately survived, but Imelda was charged with attempted murder, which carries a 20-year maximum sentence. Luckily for Imelda, in December 2018, her case was thrown out and she walked free. But just this month, literally just a couple of days ago, as I'm recording this, another woman in El Salvador, known only in the media as Esme, was just sentenced to 30 years in prison for aggravated homicide after seeking medical care in a hospital during a miscarriage. So while there have been some breakthroughs in the last decade, thanks to the tireless efforts of campaigners and organizations fighting for women's rights in El Salvador, there's still so much more that needs to be done. And if you're interested, I've included a couple of links to organizations that I learned about during my research that are fighting to end this quite literal war against women in El Salvador. But that is where this case stands as of today. And I know this video was a rough one. I've definitely been feeling all of the feelings over the last week or so, but I felt it was important to share the story of Evelyn and other women that are going through this same plight. It may me remember during my own pregnancy how I spent so much of it terrified that something was going to go wrong, that there would be some kind of emergency and that I might lose my baby. And I just cannot imagine being a pregnant woman in El Salvador or any of the other handful of countries with similar abortion laws and having that fear that something beyond your control could go wrong and you could lose your baby, plus the fear that if that happens, you might go to jail for 30, 40 years. But as usual, I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this case. This hangout absolutely does not have to end here. We can just meet up in the comments down below and talk it all out. If you're still watching, thank you so much for hanging in there. I know it was a rough one. And if you are still watching and not already subscribed, then I would just love if you did that so that you and me and Lily can be best friends forever and ever and ever. Right, Lily? Forever, forever, ever, forever, ever. Did you come to 
say bye. Thank you for the support today. You are a star as usual. Thanks so much again for spending this time with me and Lily today. We appreciate it so much. We hope you have a fabulous week and we will be counting down the hours until we see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.